So, let us move on to the next question, question number 13. Tan inverse of x plus root 1 plus x square is equal to first option pi by 4 minus half tan inverse x, second option half tan inverse x, third option pi by 2 minus half tan inverse x, fourth option pi by 4 plus half tan inverse x. Now, we are asked to find out the tan inverse of x plus root 1 plus x square. Again, the four options are also in terms of tan inverse. Let us make a substitution here. The presence of this 1 plus x square term should uh, give us an idea here that I can go for a substitution x equal to tan theta. Then x plus root 1 plus x square will become tan theta plus secant theta, which we shall write in terms of the sub multiples we will write this in the form of sin theta plus 1 by cos theta. Further, this I can write it in the form of sin theta by 2 plus cos theta by 2 by cos theta by 2 minus sin theta by 2. this 1 plus sin theta is sin theta by 2 plus cos theta by 2 the whole square and the denominator cos theta is cos square theta by 2 minus sin square theta by 2. I am cancelling out 1 cos theta by 2 plus sin theta by 2 factor and we are now left with sin theta by 2 plus cos theta by 2 divided by cos theta by 2 minus sin theta by 2. Now, further I will divide both numerator and denominator by cos theta by 2. So, I will get I will get here 1 plus tan theta by 2, we are dividing by cos theta by 2 and then therefore, 1 minus tan theta by 2. Now, this is clearly tan pi by 4 minus theta by 2, tan of pi by 4 minus theta by 2. Here, Now, when I am putting x equal to tan theta, theta lies in the open interval minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. We can take theta to be between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Now, if theta is between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, what can be said about theta by 2 will lie between minus pi by 4 to plus pi by 4. And if I go for pi by 4 minus theta by 2. So, that is going to be the least value will be 0 and the greatest value will be pi by 2. Now, is that in the principal domain? That is in the principal domain of tan function. What is the principal domain of tan function? Minus pi by 2 to open minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. So, now let us get back to this question here. What you wanted was tan inverse of x plus root over 1 plus x square. What that x plus root 1 plus x square came out to be? Tan of pi by 4 minus theta by 2. So, this becomes tan inverse of tan of pi by 4 minus theta by 2. Now, when this argument, when the argument here that is whenever you have tan inverse of tan of something, if that input lies in the principal domain we can simply cancel it out and we have is it in the principal domain? Yes, pi by 4 minus theta by 2 is between 0 and pi by 2. So, we can say it is between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and hence uh, we can say that this will be pi by 4 minus theta by 2. So, since pi by 4 minus theta by 2 belongs to the principal domain of belongs to belongs to principal domain of domain of tan tan function. So, here we can cancel out and then we have pi by 4 minus theta by 2 and what about this theta? What was theta there? Tan inverse x. So, here we have theta is equal to tan inverse x. Therefore, here we have pi by 4 minus half tan inverse x. This is 1 plus tan theta by 2 by 1 minus tan theta by 2 which is equal to 
tan of pi by 4 plus theta by 2. So, theta lies between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. So, pi by 4 plus theta by 2 also would lie between pi by 4 to pi by 2, 0 to pi by 2, it will lie between 0 to pi by 2. Okay. So, here we have uh, pi by 4 plus theta by 2, pi by 4 tan inverse of x plus root 1 plus x square is tan inverse of tan of pi by 4 plus theta by 2 that is equal to pi by 4 plus theta by 2 that pi by 4 plus theta by 2 belongs to the principal domain therefore, we have pi by 4 plus half tan inverse x and that is that is clearly seen in the option 4, option 4 is the right answer. So, option 4 is the right answer. Let us move on to the next question, the number of solutions of the equation sin inverse of 1 plus b plus b square so on up to infinity plus cos inverse of a minus a square by 3 plus a cube by 9 plus so on up to infinity is equal to pi by 2. Sin inverse x plus cos inverse some y is equal to pi by 2. Suppose we are looking at such an equation this I can write it in the form of sin inverse of x is equal to pi by 2 minus cos inverse y. But what is pi by 2 minus cos inverse y? That is sin inverse y. So, this becomes sin inverse y. So, sin inverse x is equal to sin inverse y. You could apply sin both sides and you get x equal to y. So, whenever sin inverse of x is equal to sin inverse of x plus cos inverse of y is coming is given to be pi by 2, we can conclude that x has to be y. Therefore, now coming back to the question, the sin inverse of 1 plus b plus b square so on up to infinity in finitely many terms plus cos inverse of a minus a square by 3 plus a cube by 9 so on up to infinity is given to be pi by 2. So, when is that possible? Let us treat this as x and call this as y. So, x and y should be same, but then this is an infinite GP. Let me make an assumption that mod b is less than 1. So, here we can write it, we are writing the form of 1 by 1 minus b x should be 1 by 1 minus b. What about y? Again that is what is the first term? First term is a and the common ratio is minus a square by 3. So, 1 minus of minus a square by 3. Okay. What is the infinite g p sum? It is the first sum, first term by 1 minus common ratio. The common ratio here is a square minus a square by 3. So, uh, minus a by 3, common ratio is minus a by 3. So, what we have this thing. Therefore, what we have is 1 by 1 minus b is equal to a by 3 plus a, a by 3 plus a. Now, clearly this is an equation that is possibly satisfied by infinitely many values of a and b. Okay. So, here we can have uh, this to be now 1 minus b will be equal to a plus 3 by a, a here. In other words, you have here minus b to be equal to 3 by a. So, we will have here a b is equal to minus 3. Now, how many values of a and b are there which are whose product is equal to minus 3? There could be infinitely many. So, what is it? The answer is infinite. Option 4 is the right answer. Let us move on to the next question, question number 15. If sin inverse of x by 5 plus cosecant inverse of pi by 4 is equal to pi by 2, then the value of x is first option 1, second option 3, third option 4, fourth option 5. Now, sin inverse of x by 5 
plus cos inverse cosecant inverse of 5 by 4 is equal to pi by 2. Okay. Now, let me try to convert this into cos inverse. Let us have a look at this here. Let us call this as theta. So, cosecant theta will be equal to phi by 4. Cosecant theta is phi by 4. Sin theta is equal to 4 by 5. And cos theta will be definitely 3 by 5 here. So, theta you can write in the form of cos inverse of 3 by 5. Okay, now, it is very clear that now the equation is becoming in this form, turning into this form. Sin inverse of x by 5 plus this cosecant inverse of 5 by 4 have replaced it by cos inverse of 3 by 5. Cos inverse of 3 by 5 is equal to pi by 2. So, sin inverse of x by 5 is equal to pi by 2 minus cos inverse of 3 by 5. That is nothing but sin inverse of 3 by 5. So, sin inverse of x by 5 is equal to sin inverse of 3 by 5 that gives me x equal to 3, x equal to 3. Therefore, the right option is option 2 is the right answer. Let us move to the next question, question number 16. The value of x for which cos inverse of cos 4 is greater than 3x square minus 4x is first option 0 comma 2 plus root 6 pi minus 8 by 3. Second option 2 plus root 6 pi minus 8 by 3 comma 10. Third option minus 2 comma 2. Fourth option 2 minus under root of 6 pi minus 8 by 3 comma 2 plus under root of 6 pi minus 8 by 3. So, let us move on to the solution here. Cos inverse of cos 4. Let us first find out what this is. Now, we know that cos inverse of cos x is equal to x if and only if x belongs to the principal domain of cos that is 0 comma pi. What if x is not in the principal domain? We can say it will be it will be in the form of some 2 n pi plus r minus x if x does not belong to the interval 0 comma pi for a suitable n n. So, cos inverse of cos x will be what is that suitable n? That n for which will make 2 n pi plus r minus x into the principal domain that is so that I can cancel out this cos inverse and cos. So, here this can be easily seen with the help of a graph here. Let us draw the graph of y equal to cos inverse of cos x. Now, first of all, let us observe that this function cos inverse of cos x, the innermost function is cos x and that is periodic of period 2 pi. So, if I know its behavior in an interval 0 to 2 pi, that can be copy pasted between 2 pi to 4 pi, the same values will be there and 4 pi to 6 pi also we can copy and paste it. So, y equal to cos inverse of cos x. Let us see the graph of it. Basically, we shall draw from in the interval 0 to 2 pi. So, 0 to pi we know that it behaves like y equal to x. So, y equal to x line. Next, what happens between pi to 2 pi? Pi to 2 pi it will be 2 pi minus x. This is pi comma pi point, 2 pi minus x. This would be y equal to 2 pi minus x. And then 2 pi to 3 pi again, 2 pi to 4 pi, this is copied. It is just translated because of the periodicity of this function. f of x will be same as f of x plus 2 pi. Okay, so, this would be 3 pi. 
it has a peak at pi, this has peak at 3 pi now, translated by 2 pi units. This is 4 pi now. Now, what will be the rule of the function here? This line y equal to x has been moved by 2 pi units this side. If you translate y equal to f of x graph by k units on to the right side, it would be y equal to f of x minus k graph. So, it would be now y equal to x minus 2 pi, y equal to x has been translated by 2 pi units. You see this has been moved by 2 pi units parallelly and this also will have to then replace uh, this is y equal to 2 pi minus of x minus 2 pi. So, wherever there is x you replace it by x minus 2 pi when you are translating by 2 pi units. Okay. Now, if you move it to the left side here, you see this y equal to x line has been translated by 2 pi units to the left. So, I will have here replace x by x plus 2 pi now. So, y equal to x plus 2 pi. This is minus 2 pi to minus pi, it will be like this. And what about this y equal to 2 pi minus x? You have to replace it with 2 pi minus of x plus 2 pi. So, that makes it y equal to minus x. Okay. So, this is how we draw the graph of y equal to cos inverse of cos x. This, has, this will be moved further okay. in steps of 2 pi we draw it. Now, cos inverse of cos 4 is what we want to locate. Where is 4? This is 3.14. 4 is here somewhere between pi and 2 pi. Now, cos inverse of cos 4, what is the rule of the function? When x is 4, it is 2, 2 pi minus x is the rule. So, therefore, we have 2 pi minus 4. So, cos inverse of cos 4 is 2 pi minus 4. So, now, cos what we are trying to solve is cos inverse of cos 4 is greater than 3x square minus 4x. So, what we have here is 2 pi minus 4 greater than 3x square minus 4x. So, this turns out to be 3x square minus 4x uh, mi minus plus 4 minus 2 pi less than 0. Okay. It is simple to check that this inequality because the coefficient of x square is positive here, the graph of this y equal a x square plus b x plus c will look like this. And uh, you know that is between the roots, the roots will be 2 minus root 6 pi by 8, 6 pi minus 8 by 3 and then this will be 2 plus root 6 pi minus 8 by 3. So, between 2 minus root 6 pi by 8, Six, uh, root of 6 pi minus 8 by 3 comma 2 plus root 6 pi minus 8 by 3 our x shall lie. Okay. So, that x which satisfies this inequality shall be lying in this and that is clearly seen in the option 4. Option 4 carries this answer. Now, we are going for the new question on 17. The number of real solutions of tan inverse of root over x into x plus 1 plus sin inverse of root over x square plus x plus 1 is equal to pi by 2 is first option 0, second option 1, third option 2, fourth option infinite. Now, tan inverse of root over x into x plus 1 plus sin inverse of under root of x square plus x plus 1 is equal to pi by 2. This is what is given to us. We are asked to solve this equation. Now, let us first look at the domain considerations. Domain. What do I mean by domain consideration? That is, sin inverse is valid only for non values between minus 1 to 1. Sin inverse can admit as input a number between minus 1 to 1. Now, root over x square plus x plus 1 is a non-negative quantity. Therefore, 
this has to be between 0 and 1. So, root over x square plus x plus 1, we have to have it between 0 and 1. For what values of x, this is going to happen. Let us see. So, we can square up because that being a non negative quantity, x square plus x plus 1 will have to be less than or equal to 0 now, less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to 0. That this is greater than or equal to 0 is clear because this is x plus half the whole square plus 3 by 4. You can complete a perfect square out of it. This we can write it as x square plus 2 into 1 by 2 into x plus 1. We can split it up as 1 by 4 plus 3 by 4. So, it is in the form of x plus half whole square plus 3 by 4. That is clearly non positive in fact and less than we want it to be less than or equal to 1. So, this is what we want it to be. In other words, we want x plus half whole square to be less than or equal to 1 by 4. So, we want x plus half to be lying between minus 1 by 2 to plus 1 by 2. In other words, we want x to be lying between minus 1 to 0. It means that x should lie between minus 1 to 0. Let us subtract out half from here x should lie between minus 1 to 0. That is this sin inverse of root over x square plus x plus 1 is valid. That expression is valid if and only if x lies between minus 1 to 0. Now, let us look at this thing. Tan inverse can admit any real number as an input because the domain of tan inverse function is r. But of course, here there is a square root involved in this. So, inside quantity has to be non negative. So, tan inverse of root over x into x plus 1 is valid if and only if x into x plus 1 is non negative. Okay. See, tan inverse function can admit any input, but root function can admit only non negative input. So, we want x into x plus 1 to be non negative there. So, but when is x into x plus 1 non negative? That means, x should not lie between minus 1 and 0. So, x should lie here or here. Now, when I am adding two functions, that, that function would be valued on the common domain of the two functions. What is the domain of sin inverse of root over x square plus x plus 1? Minus 1 to 0, close minus 1 to 0 whereas, this part is valid only in beyond minus 1 and 0. So, clearly the common domain concept comprises of just these two points. This is the domain of sin the second part and this part is the domain of these two are the domains of sin union of these two parts is the domain of tan inverse of root over x, square, x into x plus 1. So, common domain as we see is common domain is simply 0 comma 1, these two I am sorry minus 1 comma 0, these two numbers, these are the two common points of the domain. So, minus 1 and 0. So, your common domain is x is equal to minus 1 or x is equal to 0. Now, this is only the domain part is not it. Now, we just have we have to check whether these two points will act as solutions for the equation. When I put x equal to minus 1, I will have this to be 0 and I will have this to be sin inverse of 1. Sin inverse of 1 is pi by 2, we know that. So, what is it we can say x equal to minus 1 is an acceptable solution, this is an this is acceptable. What if I put x equal to 0? Again, this tan inverse of x plus 1 into root over x plus 1 into x plus x must be 0, tan inverse of 0, and this will be sin inverse of 1, that is again pi by 2. So, what I get is this is also a solution. So, both these x equal to minus 1 and x equal to 0 are serving as the solutions, and hence the number of real solutions is 2. So, option 3 is the right answer option 3 is the right answer. Let us move on to the next question, question number 18. If a and b are positive, then cos inverse of a minus b by a plus b 
is equal to first option 2 tan inverse b, second option 2 tan inverse root b by a, third option 2 tan inverse of root a by b and fourth option 2 tan inverse of a b by a minus b. Let us have a look at this here. Cos inverse of a minus b by a plus b. Now, that has to be converted in terms of tan inverse, 2 tan inverse most of the options are all the in fact all the four options are in the involving two tan inverse or something. So, let us see how we can convert that. This we can write it in the form of cos inverse of 1 minus under root of b by a the square I am dividing by a both numerator and denominator and we then have here 1 minus b by a that I can write as under root of b by a square 1 plus under root of b by a square. Now, that is clearly in the form of something like cos inverse of 1 minus x square by 1 plus x square that is 2 tan inverse of x. This is 2 tan inverse of x. Okay, so, here, so that comes out to be using this formula, this turns out to be 2 tan inverse of what do you have in place of x root b by a. So, 2 tan inverse of root b by a. Actually, how this, how does this come formula come? Let us have a look. Cos 2 theta is equal to 2 tan 1 minus tan square theta by 1 plus tan square theta. We know this formula. Okay. So, if I put x equal to tan theta here, I will get here cos inverse of cos 2 theta that 2 it will come out to be 2 theta and the theta can be replaced by tan inverse x. So, that is what it has come from. So, we are actually using this formula and uh, from this from using this formula we have this and therefore, we have 2 tan inverse x that is 2 tan inverse of root b by a option 2 is the right answer option 2 is the right answer. Let us move on to the next question question number 19 the equation 2 cos inverse x equals to cos inverse of 2 x square minus 1 is satisfied by first option x lying between minus 1 and 1 all x lying between 0 to 1, third option x greater than or equal to 1, fourth option x less than or equal to 1. Now, 2 cos inverse x is equal to cos inverse of 2 x square minus 1. Look at this, we will put cos inverse of x as some theta. What do we have? this would imply x is cos theta. And now, a theta should lie between 0 to pi, principal domain of cos is 0 to pi. So, let us, so what is this now? x is cos theta, so 2 x square minus 1 will become 2 cos square theta minus 1. That is clearly cos 2 theta. So, now 2 x square this implies 2 x square minus 1 converted in terms of theta will be cos 2 theta. So, let us apply cos inverse both sides cos inverse of 2 x square minus 1 is what you want here. I am looking at the right hand side that will be cos inverse of cos 2 theta. Now, we need to give a pause here we know that theta lies between 0 to pi, this would only imply that 2 theta will lie between 0 to 2 pi, 2 theta lies between 0 to 2 pi, but then I would like to write this as, I want to write this as 2 theta because theta is cos inverse x, theta is cos inverse x for me. So, when will I be able to do this? provided this 2 theta which is the 
2 theta should belong to the principal domain that is 2 theta should actually belong to 0 comma pi. So, this is possible this I that is writing this cos inverse of cos 2 theta equal to 2 theta would be possible and that in turn equal to 2 cos inverse x is possible. The above equation is possible is possible only when our 2 theta lies in the principal domain of cos what is that 0 to pi. So, this now will give me a restriction on x theta will have to lie between 0 to pi by 2 then then cos theta should lie between 0 to 1. So, should lie between 0 to 1. You meant we went for a substitution x as cos theta here. So, therefore, x should lie between 0 to 1. So, when is this cos inverse of 2 x square minus 1 going to be 2 cos inverse of x when this happens and when will this happen when 2 theta belongs to the principal domain of cos and that will mean that theta should lie between 0 to pi by 2. Let us translate that condition into x condition on x that is x should lie between 0 to 1. Therefore, answer 2 answer is the second option answer is option 2. If sin inverse of 6 x plus sin inverse of 6 root 3 x is equal to minus pi by 2 then the value of x is first option 1 by 12 second option minus 1 by 12 and third option minus 1 by 4 root 3 and fourth option 1 by 4 root 3. Now, let us have let us use the formula sin inverse x plus sin inverse y is equal to sin inverse of x into root 1 minus y square plus y into root 1 minus x square there are some deviations for this form formula, but when we are trying to solve this equation solve an equation we can just use this formula. So, sin inverse of 6 x plus sin inverse of root 6 root 3 x is equal to minus minus pi by 2 this is what we are given we are asked to solve we are asked to solve this. So, let us use this formula we have instead of x we have 6 x. So, sin inverse of 6 x into 1 minus square root of this. So, 1 minus 36 into 3 108 108 into x square plus now what is the y term 6 root 3 x into under root of 1 minus x square term that is 1 minus 36 x square is equal to minus pi by 2. Let us apply sign both sides and what do we have therefore, 6 x into root 1 1 minus 108 x square plus 6 into I will take this 3 inside the square root then I will then get 3 minus 108 x square under root is equal to minus 1 or plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, let us have a look at the options now. The options say first option is 1 by 12, second option is minus 1 by 12, third option minus 1 by 4 root 3, fourth option is 1 by 4 root 3. Now, can n positive value of x make this 0. Look at this. If x is positive, this entire quantity will be positive. This is anyway positive. This is positive. Some of positive quantities cannot be 0. So, first and fourth option are ruled out. We'll rule out option 1 and option 4 and option 4. rule out option 1 and option 4 because no x positive can match satisfy this equation and both the options 1 and 4 are giving us positive values. So, they cannot be the solutions. So, what else? 
what else you can look at? Now, I will try for x equal to minus 1 by 12. If I put x equal to minus 1 by 12, it is clearly satisfying that equation. So, I will get satisfies the equation. It is a simple check satisfies the equation. So, hence option 2 is the right answer. Next question, question number 21. If 2 tan inverse of tan alpha into tan beta is equal to x, then x can be also expressed as first option tan inverse of tan of alpha plus beta, second option tan inverse of sin 2 alpha into sin 2 beta, third option tan inverse of sin 2 alpha into sin 2 beta by cos of alpha plus beta into cos of alpha minus beta, fourth option tan inverse of sin 2 alpha into sin 2 beta by 2 into cos alpha plus beta into cos of alpha minus beta. So, let us have a look at this 2 tan inverse of tan alpha plus tan alpha into tan beta is equal to x. That is again has that x has to be again expressed in form of tan inverse only. Now, let us use this formula tan 2 tan inverse of some x is equal to tan inverse of 2 x by 1 minus x square. We will use this formula. Use the formula. So, instead of x what do you have here? Inst instead of the input x here for this 2 tan inverse thing we have tan alpha tan beta. So, let us write it come back 2 tan inverse of tan alpha into tan beta is therefore equal to this is beta here tan inverse of instead of uh, x we have tan alpha tan beta. So, 2 tan alpha tan beta divided by 1 minus tan square alpha tan beta tan square beta. So, options are suggesting that this does not we will have to go by the options here this not does not seem to be close to tan of alpha plus beta. So, first option is ruled out. So, third four, second third fourth options are involving sin 2 alpha sin 2 beta so on. So, what we will do is we will try to convert in terms of sin and cos here. So, this 2 tan alpha into tan beta we will have to simplify this divided by 1 minus tan square alpha tan square beta 1 minus tan square alpha tan square beta we will we will uh, try to convert this in terms of sin and cos. So, we have here we will write this as 2 sin alpha sin beta by cos alpha cos beta and in the denominator we have cos square alpha cos square beta minus sin square alpha sin square beta divided by cos square alpha cos square beta. We can cancel out one cos alpha cos beta factor here. So, what do you have now and that cos alpha cos beta factor will come on to the top. We then have 2 into sin alpha cos alpha cos beta sin beta we will group it like that. This term comes up and what do we have here? this is clearly cos square alpha cos square beta minus sin square alpha sin beta sin square beta we can write it as cos alpha cos beta plus sin alpha sin beta into cos alpha cos beta minus sin alpha sin beta which is nothing but cos of alpha plus beta into cos of alpha minus beta into cos of alpha minus beta. So, this is what is the expression inside this tan inverse thing 
being simplified. So, we have here, we have here. Now, if I have to convert this into sin 2 alpha, I need to multiply this by 2. So, 1, 2 will we can borrow from here. So, we have here sin 2 alpha, this 2 sin alpha cos alpha sin 2 alpha, but I need to write this also as sin 2 beta. So, I can do that by compensating by dividing by 2 here. So, I have this 2 sin beta cos beta to be sin 2 beta and we have therefore, 2 into cos of alpha plus beta into cos of alpha minus beta and where is that appearing in which option is this appearing? It is clearly appearing in the option 4. So, option 4 is the right answer. So, that is I had actually simplified this inside term there and that turned out to be sin 2 alpha into sin 2 beta divided by 2 into cos of alpha plus beta cos of alpha minus beta that is appearing in option 4. One second. The value of tan inverse of 4 by 3 divided by tan inverse of 1 by 2 is equal to 2. Reason for all x belonging to 0 comma 1 closed interval tan inverse of 2 x by 1 minus x square is equal to 2 tan inverse of x. So, now the options are both the assertion and reason are true and r is the reason is the correct explanation for assertion. Second option both a and r are true, but r is not the correct explanation for a. Third option a is true, but r is false. Fourth option a is false, but r is true. Now, what is the assertion? Assertion is given to be tan inverse of 4 by 3 by tan inverse of 1 by 2 is equal to 2. And the reason he has given was this tan inverse of 2 x by 1 minus x square is equal to 2 tan inverse of x for all x belonging to 0 comma 1. Now, let us have a look at this. This is a this is a true clearly we know this r is true. So, is r and is A true and can we use R to explain A? Let us see that. What we will do is we will take tan inverse of 1 by 2, we will go for consider 2 tan inverse of 1 by 2, consider 2 tan inverse of 1 by 2. Let us see if it turns out to be tan inverse of 4 by 3. So, 2 tan inverse of 1 by 2 you have to actually show it is equal to tan inverse of 4 by 3 if this were to be true. So, let us consider this 2 tan inverse of 1 by 2 use this formula can we use it this argument 1 by 2 lies between 0 to 1. So, we can use this form. So, 2 tan inverse of 1 by 2 is therefore, tan inverse of 2 into 1 by 2 divided by 1 minus 1 by 2 the square that makes it tan inverse of 1 by 1 minus 1 by 4 that is 3 by 4. So, tan inverse of 1 by 3 by 4 that is equal to tan inverse of 4 by 3. So, what we clearly 2 tan inverse of 1 by 2, 2 into tan inverse of 1 by 2 is coming out to be tan inverse of 4 by 3. So, that means A is also correct. So, both assertion and reason are correct and you have see, we have clearly seen that R was used, this formula was used to show that A is correct. So, here we have both assertion and reason to be correct and this reason R is in fact the correct explanation for A and therefore, the option 1 is the right answer, option 1 is the right answer. So, let us move to the next question, question number 23. If x 1, x 2, x 3 are the roots of x cube minus 6 x square plus 11 x minus 6 equal to 0. Then, cot inverse x 1 plus cot inverse x 2 plus cot inverse of x 3 is equal to first option 0, second option pi by 2, third option pi by 3, fourth option 3 pi by 2. Now, it is clear that x cube minus 6 x square plus 11 x minus 6 equal to 0. The roots of these are 
x1 equal to 1, x2 equal to 2 and x3 equal to 3. It is a clear thing, simple to thing to see because some of the roots is 6, some of the roots taken 2 at a time will be 1 into 2 plus 2 into 3 plus 1 into 3 that comes out to be again 11 and product of the roots is minus minus of minus 6 by 1 that is 1 6 there. So, 1 2 3 are the roots here. So, what we wanted was cot inverse of x 1 plus cot inverse of x 2 cot inverse of x 3. This is what we wanted. What is that? Cot inverse of 1 plus cot inverse of 2 plus cot inverse of 3. Now, cot inverse of 1 we know is equal to pi by 4 because cot pi by 4 is 1 and cot inverse of x can be replaced by tan inverse of 1 by x whenever x is a positive quantity. So, here we can this being a positive quantity we can write it as tan inverse of 1 by 2 plus tan inverse of 1 by 3. Now, we can use the formula this x and y are both less than 1 and the product is less than 1 actually. So, tan inverse x plus tan inverse y we can use it, we can use the formula tan inverse of x plus y by 1 minus x y. So, tan inverse x plus tan inverse y is equal to this and that is clearly 1 phi by 6 by 1 minus pi 1 by 6. So, that comes out to be tan inverse of 1. That is pi by 4 plus pi by 4 again and that is pi by 2. So, the right option is option 2. Option 2 is the right answer. Let us move to the next question, question number 24. If sin inverse x plus sin inverse y plus sin inverse z is equal to 3 pi by 2, then summation of the products of these terms like x power 2 naught 1 plus y power 2 naught 1 divided by x power 6 naught 3 plus y power 6 naught 3 into x power 4 naught 2 plus y power 4 naught 2 divided by x power 8 naught 4 plus y power 8 naught 4 cyclical summation. First, we are taking x y terms, then y z terms, then we will be writing one more term using z x. So, that is equal to options are first option 0, second option 1, third option 2 and fourth option is 3 there. Now, we know that sin inverse of x ranges between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. So, so is the case of sin inverse y, sin inverse z, but also ranges between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 sin inverse z ranges between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. When can the sum of all these 3 be equal to 3 pi by 2? Even if one of them either sin inverse x or sin inverse y or sin inverse z was strictly less than pi by 2, we cannot have the sum to be equal to 3 pi by 2. So, the fact that sin inverse x plus sin inverse y plus sin inverse z is equal to that is it at its peak that can happen only when all these are at their maximums. So, this will happen if and only if x is sin inverse of x must have been pi by 2. So, is the case with sin inverse y. So, is the case with sin inverse z. So, each should have been equal to pi by 2 because the maximum we each can attain is pi by 2 and the sum can be sum can be 3 pi by 2 only when all of them are at their maximum. So, we have this here then that means that this implies and implied by x has to be 1 and y also has to be 1 and z also is equal to 1. So, clearly the summation is uh, now going to be sigma of 1 power something that 1 plus something 1 power something plus 1 power something that is again 1, 1 plus 1 and then again I have 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1 that turns out to be 1, sigma of 1. How many terms are being taken here? x y 
combination y z combination z x combination we have three such combinations here. So, that makes it how much that is going to be sigma 1 1 added up how many times as many times as the number of terms that is equal to 3. So, the right option is option 4 option 4 is the right answer. Let us move to the next question 25th question tan inverse of c 1 x minus y by c 1 y plus x plus tan inverse of c 2 minus c 1 by 1 plus c 2 c 1 plus so on so forth. The last term being tan inverse of 1 by c n is equal to first option tan inverse of 2 x by y, second option tan inverse of x y, third option tan inverse of x by y, fourth option tan inverse of y by x. Look at this. Let us uh, tan inverse of c 1 x minus y by c 1 y plus x. Let me consider this first term. Let us divide throughout by c 1 y that is inside the bracket I will divide by c 1 y. What do I get? I will then get x by y minus 1 by c 1 divided by 1 plus 1 by c 1 into x by y. Now, this we can write it in the form of tan inverse of x by y minus tan inverse of 1 by c 1. What did I do here? I divided both the numerator and denominator by c 1 y, c 1 into y and I now split that into fractions here and I now use the formula tan inverse of x minus y is equal to tan inverse divided by 1 plus x y is equal to tan inverse of x minus tan inverse of y. We are trying to bring the series into the telescoping form there. So, here now we have tan inverse of c 2 minus c 1 by 1 plus c 1 c 2. Again what we will do is we will divide by c 1 c 2 both the numerator and denominator. So, then we will get tan inverse of 1 by c 1 minus 1 by c 2 divided by 1 plus 1 by c 1 into 1 by c 2. So, what did I do? I have rewrote this term this way divided both the numerator and denominator by c 1 c 2. That turns out to be tan inverse of 1 by c 1 minus tan inverse of 1 by c 2. Likewise, the next term would have been tan inverse of c 3 minus c 2 by 1 plus c 3 c 2, which you can bring it into the form of tan inverse of 1 by c 2 minus tan inverse of 1 by c 3. Going on like this, let us write the last but one term. That last but one term would have been tan inverse of c n minus c n minus 1 by 1 plus c n into c n minus 1. This is the last but one term. This is last but one. Last but one term. That is the second term from the right. And that will be tan inverse of 1 by c n minus 1 minus tan inverse of 1 by c n. Now, let us also write the last term. What is the last term? Tan inverse of 1 by c n. I will just carry that same thing here, tan inverse of 1 by c n. Now, let us add all these terms now. Let us all add up all this. What do you observe? We observe that tan inverse of 1 by c 1 is appearing with a minus sign here and a plus sign here. This, there will be cancellations. So, this will cancel when you add up this will cancel with this this would cancel with the next term there this tan inverse 1 by c 2 would cancel with this. So, all the middle terms will cancel and we will be left with tan inverse of x by y even this this would have this would cancel with this term actually this would have cancelled with the previous term there. So, the first term and this 
would have cancelled with the second term in the previous term and now you are left with the second term here tan inverse of 1 by C n with a minus sign and that plus tan inverse of 1 by C n will cancel. So, everything else cancels except the tan inverse of x by y therefore, the answer is tan inverse of x by y and that is clearly appearing in the option 3, option 3 is the right answer.